Good day, viewers. Welcome to this online biology class. I'm Mr. Vincent Godwin, your biology tutor. I work with the Nigerian Tulip International Colleges. And in this video, we will be solving JAM 2018 questions with a view to providing reasonable explanations. So I expect you to get your pencil and your jotter so that you could jot um, things or the answers to these questions. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Question one says, a group of closely related organisms capable of interbreeding to produce a fertile offspring are known as, a, um, known as members of... Okay, now let's look at the options. The options here, we have kingdom, we have class, we have family, we have species. The emphasis on this question is this. The emphasis is placed on um, closely related organisms that can interbreed freely to produce fertile offspring. Now, when a group of, organisms in, um, group of organisms interbreed freely and they produce fetal offspring, we call them offspring, we call them as species. It is interesting to know that not all organisms are species. There are some organisms that can be produced or that can reproduce via artificial um, process and even the natural process. However, the result does not give the products or the offspring the opportunity to produce. Good example of this can be seen in this. Let's see, for example, um, I have my explanation there, which I have given already. Let's see some species here. You can see this is some zoast, this is some liga. This is just a hybrid between a, um, a horse and a zebra, while this is tiger and lion, okay, being produced artificially in the um, laboratory. We also have Neil. Neil is also an example. Now, these animals are sterile. They can't give birth to um, new young organism. Why? Because they are not species. Okay, our answer here is um, species, as we have said. Let's go to the next question. Question number two says, a beaker of pond water containing a few specimens of euglena was placed in a dark room for two weeks. At the end of this period, the specimens of euglena were still alive because they were. Now, let's look at where the emphasis on this question is placed on. The emphasis on this question is placed on euglena, okay, living um, over a period of time of two weeks in a dark room where there is no light for it to photosynthesize. Now, what is the principle behind it? We all know that euglena is um, a phytoplankton, um, is a protist, that can survive or that can thrive in a place where there is um, light because it is able to photosynthesize due to the presence of um, chloroplasts. And in the absence of light, it is also able to um, live, it is able to carry out holozoic um, nutrition. Now let's see what the options here are. Option A says they are able to carry out holozoic nutrition. Could that be the answer? Anyway, let's go and see the other options. And um, B says, able to carry out photosynthesis using carbon dioxide in the pond water. C says, better adapted to life in darkness than to life in light. D says, not overcrowded. The correct answer here is A, which means able to carry out um, nutrition, okay, in the absence of light, and that is holozoic um, nutrition, okay? Now, um, this is a um, sample of amuglina. Um, you can see it is green in color when it is photosynthesizing. And when it stops photosynthesizing, the green pigmentation goes off, okay? Now let's see the next question. The next um, question says, the cytoplasm of a cell is considered a very important component because it does what? The cytoplasm. The emphasis on this question is placed on cytoplasm, the cytoplasm of a cell. What, is, um, what does the cytoplasm do? What is the function? and how does it help in the cell? We all know that the cytoplasm, which is the liquid content of the cell, suspends other cell organelles and provides means of communication and transportation between the materials in the cell. Now, let's read the options and see which of the options is um, actually the correct um, option. Here, A says, regulates the amount of energy in the cell. Suspends, B says, suspends all cell organelles C says, is the outermost part of the cell. D says, is so responsible for cell division. And the correct answer to this is um, B. And B says, it suspends other cell 
um, components or organelles. Now, this is a diagram of animal cell, as you can see. Here we have the nucleolus, we have the nucleus, um, we have the cytoplasm. This cytoplasm is actually um, a gelatinous material in the cell that helps in transferring um, or transporting materials around the cell through cytoplasmic and streaming, okay? Aiding the movement of materials around the cell. Okay, now let's move to the next question. The next question says, question number four. Use the diagram shown to answer the question. After an hour, the level of water in the tissue funnel will do what? Okay, this is a setup that is used to demonstrate um, osmosis. And of course, we all know that osmosis can be defined as the diffusion of water, okay, through a selectively permeable membrane. Now, let's see this um, setup. If you look at this setup here, you will see the tissue funnel. And in this tissue funnel, here we have um, a membrane that is tied to the tissue funnel. Here we have um, our sugar solution. Now, this is a sugar solution. And here in the beaker, we have water. Now, the question says, uh, what happens to the um, level of water, okay, in the tissue funnel after a while? Now, it is expected that the level of water in the tissue funnel is going to rise. Why? Because, of course, we know in osmosis, water moves from a region of, um, you know, weaker concentration to a region of um, stronger concentration. So the movement of water is going to be towards this direction. And as water is moving into this, what happens to it? It is expected that the water level in the tissue funnel is going to rise. So our correct answer here is um, A. Let's see the explanation we have. Over here we said only water molecules will move randomly through the membrane. And since there are fewer water molecules on the side with glucose, the water level will, in fact, begin to rise as small water molecules move into the compartment along with water and glucose already in there. And here, we are referring to the sugar in this place. Okay, um, let's go to the next um, question. Still using um, the same um, apparatus, the same um, setup for the previous um, question. This question says, use the diagram shown to answer the question. The experiment above is used to demonstrate the process of what? This experiment is actually used to demonstrate the process of um, osmosis, as we said before. Osmosis has to do with movement of uh, molecules of um, substances from region of um, um, lower concentration to region of um, higher concentration across a selectively permeable membrane. It should be known that um, in the case of osmosis, only water molecule moves across the concentration gradients and not the solute um, particles. Now let's see the options here. A says, um, the process, does it illustrate transportation? Does it illustrate water culture, diffusion, and osmosis? And this is just a clear um, setup showing the process of um, osmosis. And as you can see, the explanation of osmosis over there. Now, next question. Um, we are still going to use the same experiments to answer this question. And um, we said, in plant cell, the role of the cell membrane is played by words. Okay, the emphasis on this question is on cell wall. Okay, and cell membrane. Of course, we know the cell membrane is found in both plants and animal cells, but in plants, it is being embedded by another layer known as um, the cell wall. Okay, now let's see the explanation we have for this and um, the cell wall. As you can see, we said the main function of the cell wall is to provide structural strength and support, and also to provide a semi permeable surface for molecules to pass in and out of um, the cell. It also protects the cell from physical injury. It keeps osmotic busting at a day. It maintains the shape of um, the cell. It regulates the flow of information between the cells. It regulates the expansion of the cell. And finally, provides protection against pathogens. And as we all know, both plants and animals are protected against pathogens. Because no matter how strong an organism in is, if um, pathogens find their ways, okay, or themselves into that um, organism, they are definitely going to destroy that organism, no matter how strong the immune system of um, the organism is. Okay, let's go to the next um, question. Question number seven. Red blood cells were found to have burst open after being placed in this water. This phenomenon is known as what? Okay, the emphasis on this patient is placed on, you know, the red blood cells, Okay, bursting open in distilled water. 
Of course, we know that distilled water should be um, depending on the organism. Um, it can be isotonic or it can be hypotonic. Okay. Now here, um, the answer to this question, the options here, we have plasmolysis, we have diffusion, we have um, hemolysis, we have wilting. All these are not the answers to this, but hemolysis because we are referring to the red blood cell. Mm -hmm. Now let's see the explanation to this. Um, as you can see, we said hemolysis, which can also be called hematolysis, means the breakdown or the destruction of red blood cells so that the contained oxygen carrying pigments is re released or free. And the contained oxygen carrying pigments is the hemoglobin. And that happens when the um, cell, which is the red blood cell, is placed in hypotonic um, solution. This is in contrast to what happens when the cell is placed in hypotonic um, solution. That is this process that occurs, which is called um, crenation. Crenation is actually the process that occurs when a red blood cell is placed in a hypertonic solution. What happens is this. The red blood cells, okay, they shrivel, they break, and they release the content of um, the red blood cell, which is the hemoglobin, as against this very one, which absorbs water. Here, they absorb water and they burst open, but this one, what happens here is that they shrivel. This is because water is lost from the cell. Okay? Um, crenation can also be likened to plasmolysis when it applies to other cells because pl plasmolysis has to do with you know, the breaking down of uh, the cells when they are placed in a hypertonic um, solution. Okay? Let's go to the next question. Question number eight. The cuvetal movement of plants in response to the smell of water is called what? The emphasis on this question is placed on curvature what movement of plants in response to the stimulus of water. Okay, what happens to plants when they are close to water? Now, let's see um, the answer to this. Um, the options here, we have hydrotropism, we have geotropism, we have phototropism, we have tigmotropism. All these are responses of plants in response to different um, stimulus. Okay, or stimuli. Now, this is hydro. Hydro here means water. Okay, hydro means water. Hydro means water. Jo here stands for earth. And photo stands for light. And figmo stands for touch. So, this is response of plant towards water. This is the earth, light, and figmo. And as you can see, the question here says um, towards the stimulus of water. So, our answer here is what? Is a. And look at, looking at this diagram, um, you will see that um, you can see this is a plant, okay, close to water. Can you see the movement of the plant now? The root is moving towards the water. This is purely um, hydrotropism in action. There are other forms of um, responses, as we can see. We said um, geotropism, as I've mentioned earlier on. Um, which is the response okay, towards gravity. We have chemotropism, response to um, chemical substances. We have hydro, as we have mentioned before, response to water. We have figmo, which is response to um, torch. And we have traumatropism, which is response to um, lesion or even wound. Then we have galvanotropism, which is also um, response to gravity. Okay, now let's go to the next um, question. In question number nine, we're looking at what happens during glycolysis. Okay, as you can see, these are different equations representing different reactions. And we are being asked to find the one that relates to glycolysis. Okay, and of course, you know, in glycolysis, you put in two molecules of ATP. Okay, to generate four molecules of um, ATP. And by the time you remove the two molecules of um, ATP, okay, being imputed, okay, or being inserted in the equation, you discover that your net gain, the net gain of your ATP is um, two. Now, let's see what happens. This is um, glucose, okay? This is glucose um, molecule, okay? When it undergoes um, fermentation, or when it undergoes glycolysis, 
You're going to have pyruvic acid. This is pyruvic acid. Okay, two molecules of pyruvic acid plus hydrogen and plus two ATP. Two ATP is the net gain of um, the process of glycolysis. And of course, we know that glycolysis can occur either in the presence or absence of um, oxygen. And for sure, we know it takes place in the cytoplasm. Now, let's see what we have here. As you can see, this is just um, the stepwise reaction that occurs during glycolysis before you have this end product, which is uh, the pyruvic acid. Okay, as I read, we said, glycolysis is the process by which glucose is broken down to produce energy. The aim of um, glycolysis is to produce energy. Now, depending on what happens after glycolysis, okay, if um, oxygen is present, the result, okay, which is the pyruvic acid, goes into the Krebs cycle. And if it is not, okay, you, the result is still um, different, okay, but have it at the back of your mind that um, the net gain of the ATP in glycolysis is 2 ATP. Okay, let's move to the next question. Question number 10. The longest bone in the body is the, the longest bone in the body is the what? The emphasis here is placed on the longest bone, the longest bone in the body. And of course we know um, bones can be classified into different, um, or can be put into different classes. We have um, flat bones, we have long bones, okay, we have short bones and so on. But here we have been asked to find, um, to identify these bones and to um, identify or to point out which one is the longest. From this, you will discover that this is also a long bone, okay, um, but it's not as long as this. So um, our answer here, our answer here is the femur, okay, the femur is the longest bone in the body. Can we see how it looks like? Let's see, this is the diagram of a femur. If you look out from here, you will see that um, it's actually the longest bone in the body and it supports the weight of the upper um, abdomen, okay? From the viscera up, okay, you have the abdominal cavity, the thoracic cavity, they are all being supported by the um, femur, which is the strongest, the heaviest, and the, um, the longest bone in the body, okay? So let's move to the next question. Question by 11. Which of the following structures is not a skeletal material? Looking at the options here, we have, okay, chitin, we have cartilage, we have bone, and we have muscle. All these are materials found in, you know, the supporting tissues of our plants. And, sorry, in the supporting tissues of animals. Okay, but we're going to see which one suits the equation and how we can um, bring out the answer to this. If you look at this, this is skeletal material, okay? This is a skeletal material. This is a skeletal material. This is a skeletal material. This skeletal material is found in organisms with exoskeleton. For example, you have um, insects, okay? Mostly the arthropods have this skeletal material. Then we have cartilage. Cartilages are found in some animals and also in humans, for example, where you have them okay, covering the surfaces of our bones and cushioning or providing cushioning effects to the bones and preventing them from breaking or destruction. Then bones, all these three are parts of um, the skeletal material except this very one. This one does not provide um, protection for other animals. Now let's see the explanation we have for this, okay? We have, as you can see, we said muscles are soft tissue. They are not as hard as the other skeletal materials. And we said um, they can stretch, okay, um, sometimes even beyond their length. And we all know that uh, muscles of different types, uh, we have those ones that are found at the chest um, region, uh, which we call the cardiac. Okay, we have um, the spirited, we have the smooth muscles, and so on, okay? But here, we are looking at the options here, okay? And our correct answer here is a muscle. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Um, question number 12. The reason why the flow of blood through the capillary is very slow is 
Now, what is the reason why um, the flow of blood in the capillary is very slow? Okay, let's see the options here. A says, because the wall of the capillaries are thin. Could it be because they want to avoid high blood pressure to ensure that the individual does not get dizzy to allow adequate time for exchange of materials? Now, all these are the options. But which one best um, suits this? We all know that the walls of uh, the capillary are so thin. And that is because there should be enough time for the exchange of materials and to allow substances to be assimilated, okay, or for cells to actually get the oxygen content of uh, the food material that is circulated in the blood. Now, let's look at this option. The correct answer to this is um, D, and this says it is to allow adequate time for exchange of materials, just as we have said, and also to allow time for exchange of gases and much nutrients. It provides resistance, okay, there is a resistance um, to the flow of substance, and because of the resistance, substances could be absorbed within um, the capillary. Okay, let's go to the next question, question number 13. Which of the following groups of animals has kidney as the excretory what organ? If you look at these options here, you have sets of um, organisms, animals, and we're asked to be to identify which one, uh, which of these um, groups, okay, um, uses kidney as their excretory organ. Okay, now let's look at them one after the other. We have fish here. Of course, fish is a vertebrate. All vertebrates have um, um, make use of um, kidney for excretion. We have amphibians, which are also vertebrates. We have birds, and we have man. Okay, could it be this? Could um, this be the correct answer? Anyway, let's see um, option B. Option B says fish, amphibian, Anelid is not part. Insect is not also what part. Okay? Fish is correct. Reptiles is correct. This is correct. But this is wrong. Okay? Fish is correct. This is wrong. This is correct. This is correct. And if you look at all this, you will see that option A is actually the correct and option. Okay? Let's see the explanation for this. We have, you can see this is the diagram of a kidney. And we have simple explanation here. We said, the excretory system of the vertebrate um, body includes the kidneys, the skin, the gills, and what? The lungs. And specialized salt secreting or salt absorbing structures. Also, most land vertebrates use what kidney as their excretory organ, just as we have said before. This is just the diagram of um, the kidney. Let's go to the next question. Question number 14. Which of the following features is not a characteristic of artery or of the arteries? Let's look at the options. The emphasis here, um, the emphasis is on the characteristics, characteristics of um, arteries. Okay, let's see what makes an artery. Okay, let's see. Um, we said A, possesses valves at interval throughout their length. Um, it is a known fact that Arteries do not possess um, valves, and um, this is because of um, the pressure of um, blood in them. If they were to possess some um, valve, um, the valves may not give them the opportunity or may not allow for the free flow of blood, and that could lead to um, cardiac arrest or the death of, um, the death of uh, that particular organ or that part where the blood is to be transported. Okay, question B, um, option B says, have thick muscular and elastic walls, okay? Could this be the answer? Let's look at the other options. Now, carry blood away from the heart. Of course, we know that all arteries carry blood away from the heart. Transport oxygen, um, oxygenated blood, with the exception of the pulmonary um, artery. Okay, now let's see the options here. The correct answer here is, is A. They possess valve at interval throughout their length. Okay, this is not... Um, one of the characteristics of um, arteries, because arteries are not known to possess a um, valve. This is just diagrammatical representation of an um, artery. Okay, let's see the next question. Okay, question number 15. The graph above shows the result of a laboratory investigation, which measures the body temperature of a lizard 
an egg under changing artificial condition. Use it to answer the question, okay? Now, this is a graph. If you look at this, you will see that um, we have this line, okay, is for the lizard. This is for lizard, while this one is for the bird. This, is, this one is for the bird, okay? If you look at this, which is for the bird, you will see that um, the line is fairly constant, okay? It is the rising of this. It's not too steep, showing that there is a fairly um, constant, or there is a regulation or a maintenance of a fairly constant body temperature. While um, that is over temperature, you can see, irrespective of the temperature, the changes are just insignificant or very small, if not even negligible. But if you look at that of a lizard, which is very, um, which is up here, you will see that from here to here is fairly constant. Then there is a, sh um, a sharp shoot from this point to this point that shows that the temperature of um, the day has um, changed again. Then from this point to this point, you can see that it is also fairly constant. And because of that, um, it shows that as temperature of the day um, varies or changes, the temperature of um, the body of these animals also what vary. Now, animals that are able to maintain fairly constant body temperature are said to be homeothermic, while those ones that um, have their body temperature changing as the temperature of um, the day um, changes is said to be point kilothermic. Now, let's look at the options here. The options A says the bird's blood was always warmer than that of the lizard. B, the body temperature of the bird varied less than that of uh, the lizard during changes in environmental temperature. C, the body temperature of the bed remained constant despite changing in environmental temperature. D, the body temperature of the lizard was always close to that of the environment, environmental um, temperature. Now, let's see the explanation for this. Um, as you can see, we said um, the state of balance within all physical systems needed for a body to function properly and survive is called homeostasis. Without homeostasis, all this will not, um, will not um, happen. Homeostasis ensures that um, environments, internal environments, are being kept at a fairly constant um, rate. The answer to this question is C, um, because we said the body temperature of um, the bed remains constant despite the, change, the changes in environmental um, temperature. Okay, let's go to the next question. Question number 16. The graph below okay, shows the results of laboratory investigation which measures the body temperature of lizard and that of um, a bed under changing artificial water condition. Do you see to answer the question? Okay, and this is the question. The question says, what physiological term can be used to describe the regulation of the body temperature of the lizard? Okay, what physiological term? can be used to describe um, the regulation of, as I said earlier on, okay, the um, physiological term that can be used to describe that of a um, lizard here is point kilotami, okay? Now, let's see the explanation to this. Um, as we have chosen, we said our answer is C, now point kilotami is the quality of having body temperature that varies or fluctuates depending on the temperature of the environment, okay? Next question. Question number 17, the reason why hospitals use saline solution as drip instead of water is, now the emphasis on this question is, play, excuse me, is placed on um, saline solution, okay? Saline solution being used instead of water, okay? Now, um, here we have some options. We said because salt is a preservative, B, to prevent contamination of the body. C, to maintain the composition of the bo body fluid. D, to increase the number of blood cells. Now, let's see the explanation we have here. We said, saline solution is administered to maintain the composition of the body fluid. Okay, doctors use intravenous saline to replace lost fluid, flush out wounds, deliver medications, and sustain patients throughout surgery, dialysis, and even chemotherapy. Okay, 
Let's move to the next question. Do not forget our answer here is uh, C, okay? Now, next question, question number 18. The part of the ear which contains nerve cells sensitive to sound vibration is the what? Okay, now let's see. Um, over there is the diagram of um, the ear, okay? Um, if you look at this, this is the oval window, um, the vestibular canals, okay, the semicircular um, canals, okay? You have the cochlea. Our emphasis is on the cochlea. Um, the cochlea here, okay, is actually responsible for detection of sound and the transmission of this sound to the um, brain for interpretation, okay? This one contains um, auditory nerves that send impulses, electrical impulses to the brain for interpretation. Now, let's see what the question here says. The question says, the part of the ear which contains nerve cells sensitive to sound vibration is what? Our correct answer here is um, the cochlea, okay? And that is what I have shown you um, over there. Okay, now let's um, go to the next um, question. Let's see what the next question is saying. Question number 19 of 2018. And the question says, spectacles with convex lenses correct long-sightedness by, okay, let's see the options. The options here um, says, A says, converging the ray of light before they enter the eye. B, converting the light rays before they enter the eye. C, reducing the light rays, the light intensity before entering the eye. D, increases the light intensity before they enter the eye. Now, the emphasis on this question is placed on long-sightedness. The emphasis is placed on long-sightedness. Now, spectacles with convex lenses correct long-sightedness by how? Now, the correct answer here is A, okay? The spectacles have to convert the rays of light before entering the eye. Now, I have a diagram here to show how this happens. Now, you can see um, this is an object. This is the human eye. This is the convex lens. Even though this is um, by convex um, lens, now what it does is that it converges, you know, the rays of light before they enter the eye. And in the process, images will now be formed on the retina. Um, do not forget that in long-sightedness, the um, sufferer um, is unable to see near objects, you know, distant um, objects, okay? And this is because the eyeball is too flat, the eyeball is too short, or the lens is too flat. And also, it could be, um, this results in the formation of uh, the objects behind the retina. Let's move to the next question. A seed of a flowering plant can best be described as what? How do you describe the seed of a flowering plant? I have um, a diagram, an explanation for this. As you can see, this is um, the seed of, a, of um, a plant, okay? Now, this is the embryo shoot for this. The tester or the seed coat, which is the outermost covering, we have the embryo shoot, which is the one that grows out to um, form the, um, the plant, okay? Then we have the cotyledon that provides the food reserve for the um, seed, okay, before germination. Now, let's see the options here. We said um, radical and plumule, the development of ovule, the embryo and endosperm, and D says developed ovary. The correct answer here is the developed what? Ovule, which is fertilized after pollination. Okay?